Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, enduringly known as MoSport, is considered to be the fastest track in North America. Whether you're going to MoSport for the first time, or whether you're a MoSport ace, I think this track guide might have something for you. I want to give you every little bit of detail about this track. I want you to know it as well as I do. This guide is intended to be applicable to everyone in any car, high or low power, so it can lack some precision in things like line. If you want coaching tailored to you and your car, feel free to reach out to me on Discord by going to discord.lasttenth.com from your browser. Before we begin, let's play through a reference lap done by our very own The Chick. After, we will dissect the track corner by corner so that you can be safe and find your last tenth. Now that we've seen how the chick does it, let's break it down. Turn one is a relatively straightforward corner, aside from the visibility and slightly downhill. Optimize it like you would any plain vanilla corner. Entering T1, you want to stay as far left as possible. Look where the track disappears. That means the track starts going downhill from there. In this case, there's a cone for approximate braking and turn-in point, but cones aren't always there, or worse, they're at different spots. A more permanent reference is the sewer grate on the left. Most cars will need to brake, but if you have enough aero or not a lot of power, lifting might be sufficient. As you approach the crest in the road and see more of the track, you want to look for the super pave. The super pave is the darker part of the track, and I'm told it offers more grip. You want your tires on it for more grip, but you won't see it until after you turn in, so use the Marshall Station as a proxy marker to point your vision in the right direction. Generally, you want to have your eyes on the apex when you turn in, but it won't be possible in this case. You will find that this is often the case in many corners here. Here, you can use the super pave as a reference. For most cars, you will want to put the left tires on the left half of the super pave. And right at the super pave, the track will drop. You will see it when we play it through in a moment, but you'll also see it in this picture here. The downward slope is steepest just after the entry at about five degrees. When the left tire lands, it will compress onto a grippier surface. This added grip will pull the front of the car towards the inside. So make sure you're prepared for it and work the speed up gradually. You don't want to be in a situation where it upsets the car too much and spins. While on the super pave, you want to be looking at the inside curb as your apex reference. The apex is generally halfway to about three quarters into the curb. And because of the pit wall, the exit of T1 is actually narrower than the entry, so the apex needs to be a little bit later than you expect. Until you see it, you want to be easing the car towards the inside bit by bit as you decelerate. There's a bit of a camber on this corner, so you want to take advantage of that. The apex curb can be used by some cars. It's quite gradual and flat, but keep in mind it's painted and uneven. Also, the end of the curb is a sudden drop and your suspension may or may not be able to handle it. There is some extra track to the right of the curb. If you're going for every last tenth, you may be tempted to use it, but it's very dirty past the curb, so use at your own risk. 
A bit further down, there's also a sewer on the inside for visual reference. And by now, you should already have your vision on the exit and accelerating at the apex. You'll need to look over the pit wall to see the exit curb. The earlier you sight it, the earlier you'll know when to get on the throttle. You'll notice there's runoff beyond the exit curb. If regulation permits, you can cross your left tires over the curb and back for a wider and faster exit. The curb is very flat, and you can see that it's commonly used by the tire marks. Make sure you come back on the paved track before the curb ends though. And you can see it's very dirty out there and it's not as rubbered, so limit the steering lock as much as possible if you choose to cross the curb. Crossing the curb is not without its risks. A safer alternative is to not use the curb at all and put your left tires right up to the right side of the curb. But what you wanna do is avoid riding the curb if possible. If your front and rear tires don't get on and off the curb at the same time, as they likely won't, the tire that's on the curb will slip a bit more. If that happens to be your rear tire and your front tire is coming back onto the paved track, the car could come loose. So if you do cross the curb, be prepared that the car could try and come around on you. After a safe exit, you wanna smoothly and gradually make your way to track right to prepare for turn two. But watch out for cars coming out of the pits on your right side. The blend line extends down most of this mini straight. Also, some run groups at track days will permit passing here. If you give a pass, make sure you lift early and make it easy for the passing car. It's a very short straight, about 150 meters from exit to brake. In that time, the passing car needs to make up two to three car lengths, and you want to do your best to avoid going into the next corner too wide. It's also tricky because you need to go from left to right in a very short distance, so both cars need to be communicating through their body language to plan the pass before the straight. And that's why not all run groups are permitted to pass here. The challenge in turn two is that it's downhill and it's very steep. It's a very dangerous corner and you're about to find out why. Once you're in the corner at speed, you have very little room to correct any mistakes. If you're too fast or you miss your turn in, you become a passenger. You have little to no options when it comes to managing your speed or line. As you go more and more downhill, you won't be able to use the brakes much or you'll spin. And because you're downhill and unloading in the first half, you won't be able to change your line much. If you force the car to turn, the car can very likely come around. What you want to do is enter on the right side, but make sure you don't miss your turn in or swing any of your tires under the grass when you transition from moving right to left. As always, leave some safety margin if you need to. It's a very fast corner. Some cars can lift instead of brake. Because of the intricacies of this corner, do not over speed. Work up your speed progressively. You'll notice that this is another blind corner. This is a 22 meter drop that's more than five stories high. It also happens very quickly. This is the steepest downhill corner of the whole track. In the middle, it slopes down more than eight degrees. You will not see anything but treetops when you turn in. On approach, you will see the Marshall Station front and center. If there are any hazards at the bottom of turn two, the only way you'll know is through this marshal, so make sure you pay attention to any flags that are being flown. Visually, you can use the bridge as a reference. You'll notice the Chig has already started turning in before the bridge and before he can see where the corner goes. You can also use the utility pole and the marshal station to help you position the car. You want to aim the car to the leftmost part of the track that you can see. This is typically a double apex turn. Because of the risk of this corner, it's best for novice and intermediate drivers to complete their braking early and get the car settled before going over the crest. There is very little grip on entry, so newer drivers may want to prioritize balance over speed. For more advanced drivers though, they can carry some breakdown towards the first apex. You will have seen the Chig do that in his lap at the beginning. Just bear in mind the track continues to crest downhill until halfway through the corner you will have less and less grip as you enter, especially in the rear. At the first apex, there will be a divot on the left side of the track. You wanna get as close to that as possible. There's a bit of camber here, and some drivers will even use the gutter for some additional camber and track width. At this point, you wanna focus on keeping the car balanced. You will wanna be on the throttle already, but very gently. You will wanna keep some load rearward as you're going downhill. Once you're on the throttle, you will not want to lift or apply any brake. Many drivers have spun the car right into the wall by doing that. Stay on the throttle. 
There is a bump in the track just after the first apex. You may need to play this onboard video a few times to notice the bump. Too much throttle can potentially loosen the back end and too little will not transfer enough weight to settle the car. If the car feels unstable, you can let the car run wide a little bit and sacrifice the exit. Once past the first apex, you can allow the car to drift outwards about a third track. And here we get a closer look of the dangers in this corner. Any loss of control will send you careening downhill straight into that wall. And you can see the evidence by those tire marks. This is also around where the corner is the steepest. It's a lot better now that it's all paved, which gives you some degree of control. Before that, that whole off track area used to be grass. Once you're off track, you were guaranteed to hit the wall. There's also a Marshall station at the bottom of the corner. After the bump, you can start being a bit more confident with the throttle and start accelerating. This is where the track begins to compress and you get a lot of grip. You may have seen the Chig reach 1.6 Gs in this corner. That's 15% more than what you see for the rest of the track. At this point, you wanna start bringing the car back to the second apex. The second apex is around the end of the patch of payment on the left. However, you should be looking for your exit and adding throttle accordingly. If you are carrying enough speed, the car will naturally want to move to the exit curb or even past it it's relatively safe to cross this curb. This curb is very flat and level. There's lots of runoff to the right and after the curb. If there is any instability, you are in no rush to fight the car back to the left. You can just open the wheel and let the car settle. Bear in mind that some regulations may not permit you to cross the curb and there are lots of marbles out there. Sometimes cones may be placed out there which may damage the bodywork if you hit it. So be careful when you cross the curb. If you choose not to cross or use the curb, like the chick did here, that's perfectly fine too. You need to be going at a very high speed exiting turn two to need to use this curb. A majority of drivers won't reach that limit. After you exit, you wanna hustle the car to the left side to prepare for turn three entry. Like the previous straight, this passing zone is only for some run groups for the very same reasons. T3 is quite tricky to optimize. It goes uphill, crests, then downhill. To make it even more interesting, it's an increasing radius corner, which means the apex will feel early and you'll be on a throttle before you see the exit and possibly before you even see the apex. It also seems to be the bumpiest corner and has a cambered inside, which will punish any mistakes in your line. So you'll need to be very familiar with where you're positioned in the corner in order to drive it well. From T2, you'll be hustling from the right side of the track to the left to enter T3. Because of that, you may not be braking parallel to the track. So make sure you don't brake too late, otherwise you'll miss your turn in or worse, dip a wheel into the grass. There's a large billboard to your left that you can use as a visual reference. Also, this is a very light brake zone. Most cars won't need a lot of brake pressure. It's also an uphill entry at around three degrees. So make sure you don't lose too much speed while trail braking. Focus on balancing the car. Here, it's very important to focus your vision on the inside on approach to this corner. When you try to get the car all the way left, it's very easy to turn in late. It's going to be better to not get all the way left than to turn in late. This corner goes uphill over crest. So if you turn in late, you will most likely miss the apex and the camber on the inside. If you force the car to the apex, it's very easy to spin or run wide into the grass. There's also a marshal station as you look towards the inside. You will need to rely on this marshal to know if there are any on-track problems after the crest. The inside of T3 offers a bit more camber than the previous corners and more than the outside of the corner. So you'll definitely want to avoid the outside. If you run wide, the car will lose grip and you will just run wider and wider. Generally, you will not see the apex on entry because it's after the crest. You'll also notice T3 is quite bumpy, so your car may have a bit of trouble maintaining grip. The different pavement can help you stay on your line. Generally, your outside tires should be on the darker pavement. The darker pavement will also move closer and closer to the inside, which brings you to the apex. There's usually a cone that helps you recognize when you're approaching the apex before you crest. This curbing is quite high, so I don't recommend using this curb as it will unsettle your car. You can see how clean this curb is, which shows drivers generally don't use it. This is an increasing radius corner, so the apex might feel a bit early. Make sure you accelerate at the apex though. It may be difficult for you to time because you'll be accelerating and possibly at full throttle before you see the exit. And you will definitely be on the throttle before you see the apex. So if you don't feel like you need to use the entire track out, you've accelerated too late or entered too slow. But even so, be extra sensitive to your rear grip. Once you go over crest and downhill, your rear tires will have less load and less grip on them. Once you're on approach to the apex, the road will crest and you will start to see the downhill section. 
This is as steep downhill as it was uphill at around three degrees. At this point, you should be scanning for the exit. The exit for most cars will be the beginning of the exit curb. And it will be hard to see because it's blocked by the inside wall. But again here, the darker pavement will be a useful guide for you. You should be just inside the right edge of the darker pavement. The exit curb here is quite flat and very, very usable. Just like turn two, you will need to have a very good exit and a lot of speed to use the exit curb. Most drivers won't need to use it. And this section is downhill, which will unload your rear wheels. So again, be extra sensitive to your rear grip. Once you exit the corner, you will need to hustle the car to the right side to enter turn four. Although you need to move the car from the left to the right, this straight is longer than the previous straights. So we more commonly see this straight as a permissible passing zone, but that's not always the case. Turn four is the scariest and fastest corner on this track. You're going at a very high speed into a completely blind downhill left. You will want to keep as much of the speed you built in the previous straight as possible. This is the second steepest corner at six degrees downhill. So you're going to spend a lot of your attention managing the car's balance and keeping your speed as high as possible. As you approach the corner, you're not going to see where it turns. Just like T2, all you see are going to be treetops. This time, it's a 17 meter drop. This is the view in reverse, and you can really see how steep that hill is. And just like turn two, this corner is a downhill over crest, which will lower your grip at entry. But with this corner, I don't advise you carrying too much brake, if at all, into the corner. If you do trail brake a bit, I would suggest you to be off the brakes by the bridge. Even though it isn't as steep as turn two, this corner is much faster. The higher speed will mean that your car will have less stability. This is also a much shorter corner. This corner takes just over half the amount of time it takes you to complete turn two. So your inputs are gonna be much faster and there's much less time for you to fix any mistakes. And lastly, the added speed and less runoff also creates much more risk. So in my opinion, T4 needs a much higher safety margin than T2 don't be in a rush to go in fast. Even though some cars only need a lift and some can even take it flat, increase your pace bit by bit. The track crowns in the middle, so you don't wanna be caught on the outside trying to turn in over the crest. There aren't really good visual references here, but there's a bridge and utility pole on the outside you can use as reference. You will want the car to be already moving towards the inside well before those references. As with the other corners, there's a Marshall Station to signal any issues that you can't see, so make sure you pay attention. As you pass the Marshall Station on the right, the rest of the turn will visually reveal itself. Once you're past the center of the track, you will start getting on camber. You don't want to be caught on the off camber side. Once you're on camber, you can smoothly increase your speed and get some load to the rear axle in preparation for the steeper portion of the corner. At this point, you have a very good view of the entire T5, so make sure you give it a quick scan to see if there are any problems on track. The key to this corner is to maintain as much speed as you can through the corner while staying balanced. In this corner, you want to apex very late, almost at the exit of the corner because you want to compromise the exit to get a good entry into T5, the most important corner of this track. The apex will be at the bottom of the hill near the end of the uneven pavement on the inside. The exit of T4 blends into the entry of T5A. There are various lines which depend on the performance metrics of your car. Also, this section between 4 and 5A is very short. Typically, there isn't any part of it where a car is straight and not braking. It takes a lot of awareness, communication, coordination, and speed management for two cars to make a pass safely. So passing here is typically only reserved for the most advanced run groups, if permitted at all. Turn five consists of five A, B, and C. This is the most important complex of corners on the entire track. It leads onto the straight where you typically spend about a quarter of your lap going full throttle. So a perfect exit out of five is non-negotiable. The challenge here, as you can see, is that it's a reducing radius with a very steep initial uphill. You don't see where you're going when you enter, so it's very hard to manage your speed which makes it very hard to carry speed and keep decreasing it through the corner. In this case, you can see the Chig taking a line that favors straight line braking towards the 5A apex. If you ask 10 different people, you will find 11 different ways to take this corner. Some will say skip the 5A apex and enter wide. Ultimately, this depends on your car's performance metrics, so don't take what others say as gospel. Learn the principles to find the optimal apex and then apply it. But whatever you do, you don't want to miss the breaking point in order to get the car left. If you overspeed, you will head straight off the track and possibly into a wall. 
do not miss your breaking point. There is a Marshall station on the top left. Make sure you check the station beforehand because if there's a problem, you will need to lift and brake early. Again, there aren't really any good references here. There are two billboards to the left, but they're quite late and you really shouldn't be looking left. As you approach this apex, it goes from a very steep drop to an even steeper two and a half story climb. It's not easy to see it in this video, but you can really tell from this photo. At one point, it's an eight to nine degree climb. So it's as steep, if not steeper in uphill than T2 is downhill. This puts the car in a very heavy compression, which adds a lot of grip. And with this added grip, you can brake a lot harder than normal. The Chig was able to hit 1.6 Gs of deceleration on his lap. So cars that are very low or with soft suspension may rub under this compression. As you apex 5A, you're not gonna see where you're going. The corner goes over crest at the apex, so there's much less grip there. As always, increase your speed gradually. If you overspeed into 5A, you could easily spin or go straight into the wall. There's also a lot of camber here, so make sure you clip the inside. The curb is quite high. Even so, you can use the outermost bit of the curb, but be very moderate with how much you use. From the photo, you can see which part of the curb is most often used. 5A through C are compound corners. Since 5C is generally taken flat, you will want to optimize for 5B apex and exit. 5B is a sharper corner than 5A, so you'll need to decelerate all the way from 5A entry to 5B apex. In other words, you shouldn't be on the throttle exiting 5A. Instead, you should be on the brakes. As you exit 5A, you will move towards the outside and transition into 5B. At this point, your mind and eyes should be preparing for the entry of 5B, not trying to exit 5A. It is okay to take glances to the outside to position your car, but the focus of your vision at this point should really be the apex of 5B. There is curbing on the outside and it tends to suck the car away from the turn, so use at your own risk. If you're over speed though, you should use that curb and the runoff as an escape route. Also for some cars, it is not necessary to track all the way left to enter 5B. And that is especially the case for lower powered cars. Some people may teach you to be fully left to open the entry to 5B so you can get on the throttle early. I know it sounds like it makes sense, but that's not necessarily the fastest way. As long as you can accelerate cleanly at the apex of 5B without lifting and using the full track on exit at 5B, you are doing fine. If you try to go fully left, it is very easy to miss the turn in. This will make you miss the apex and the camber or under speed, either of which will cost you a lot of time. This apex leads to the longest straight of the track. The amount of time you spend full throttle on the straight from here is a quarter of your lap. So keep your eyes up and don't mess this up. Once you're turned in, you will see a sharp kink on the apex curb. That's going to be your apex. Even though this curb looks quite benign, it is generally not usable. A very, very, very tiny bit is probably okay, but you will still see the car hops when the chick goes over it. When you approach the apex, the exit curb is very easy to spot. For most cars, the exit will be around where the pavement changes color. The exit curb can be used for some extra track, even though it's a bit rough. This will really help you maximize the exit for 5B, which is what you want since 5C is taken flat in the drive. Just be careful that the exit curb will end as it transitions into 5C. The back straight, which includes turn six and seven, is uphill and very long. So take a moment, relax your hands, have some water, and check your WhatsApp. It gets pretty steep at some parts, even though it's hard to tell in the car. This would be the first straight where passing is permitted for all run groups. But this straight really isn't all that straight, so pay attention in the driver's meeting so you know which side the organizers want you to pass on. You will pass two Marshall stations along the way with the second one at a crest. If there's anything wrong on the other side, they will give you a warning so you can slow down accordingly. The next section after this straight is often referred to as the S's. It is the last section of this track and it's a sequence of corners where each corner is tighter than the next. This is another set of corners where understanding the fundamentals of optimizing a corner will be very helpful. Ultimately, you want to optimize for the exit of T10, but at the same time, you want to maintain as much of the speed you built in the back straight as possible when you enter T8. You don't wanna waste the speed you spent a quarter of your lap building. The first two corners are fairly straightforward as long as you know what line you want to take. Turn 10, however, is an uphill corner that crests so you can't see the exit. So your car positioning and your car heading is going to be very important when you enter T10. As you approach the first of these set of corners, turn eight, 
you will see it goes over a crest at a bridge. It's just a two and a half degree turn, but if you walk the track, you will notice it's a lot steeper than it feels in the car. You won't see what's on the other side, so there's a Marshall station on the left just before the bridge to give you any warnings. Also, if you plan to pit, you should signal here to let the drivers behind know. The braking zone is generally after the crest, though some beginners may feel more comfortable braking light and early before the crest. Either way, it is helpful to get the car fully to the left side and parallel to the track before the crest. You ideally don't want to be turning and braking over the crest or not have enough time to straighten the car after the crest if you brake later. In terms of visual markers, there are plenty. There's a Marshall station and the bridge itself. Past the crest, there are five utility posts at regular intervals on the left side, as well as the start of a fence. In this case, you will have seen the check break just as he passes the second utility pole. You may also notice that he leaves some extra room on the left side. This car tends to wiggle a bit under heavy braking, so the chick is taking extra caution. This is the highest speed brake zone on the track. It's continually cresting and a slight downhill for another 160 meters after the bridge with no runoff and walls on both sides. So you don't want to make any mistakes here. Those not familiar with the track will want to brake early and progressively move the brake marker inwards. If you brake over the crest, make sure you're not braking at maximum because the car will unload and you will lack grip. It's very easy to get the car loose and have a moment when you brake over the crest. At this point, you should be placing your vision on the apex and preparing to turn in, which usually is between the third and the fourth utility pole. Some drivers will take a double apex here, in which case you will apex at the two separate curves. This line will help you take advantage of the camber at the first apex. If that's what you wanna do, set your eyes on the first curb and you will turn in a bit earlier. As you do this, you will probably notice the Marshall station on the inside. I prefer the single apex at the second curb, and this is what you'll see the chick do here in a moment. This helps set up for the next corner whilst maintaining a high cornering speed. So in my opinion, this line sets you up for T10 a bit better. For this line, since it's a slight three degree uphill, you can't see the apex, but you can use the darker pavement as a reference. You generally want to keep the car entirely on the pavement and gradually tease the car further and further right. During this time, you should be managing a slow deceleration. You may have seen that the Chig was actually on the throttle during this time, but keep in mind he was decelerating. Many drivers often associate throttle with acceleration, but they are not equivalent. You can be on the throttle and decelerating. What the Chig was doing here was minimizing the deceleration with the use of a bit of throttle. This will be especially the case if your car has a lot of aero. Even though these curbs are not as aggressive, you will want to be careful with how much you use. You're at pretty high speed and you need to balance the car quite well here to maintain that speed. From the photos, you can see that they're only partially used. You can avoid the curbs entirely if you prefer. Also, comparing the discoloration on the second curb, it is clear that the second curb is a lot more used than the first. Approaching the apex, you want to check the Marshall Station to your right to make sure everything's clear. If there are no problems and you're not pitting in, you should be scanning for the turn nine apex and mentally preparing yourself to enter T9. Exiting T8 and entering T9, you wanna be closer to the right than the left side of the track. Just exactly where you need to be will really depend on how your car handles turn 10. If you plan to pit in, you will want to provide a second signal here. For lapping, I generally maintain speed and drive straight towards the Marshall Station before I slow down and turn left to enter the pits. This way, I have a lower chance of impeding drivers that are behind me. Turn nine on its own has very little significance. The main goal here is to position for turn 10's entry while going through turn nine as efficiently as possible. You should avoid going from T8 apex curb to T9 apex curb in a straight line. Whilst that is the shortest distance, it prohibits you from exiting T8 and entering T9 at a higher speed. Straight lining it will underutilize the car's grip and you wanna use all of it for as long as possible to achieve the lowest lap time. And because there is camber on the inside of both T8 and T9, you will go over some crowning as you transition. There is probably some loss in grip, but you aren't turning all that much, so it probably isn't very noticeable. There aren't any good references aside from the utility pole and the billboard on the right, but they're on the wrong side. So it's important for you to get your eyes accurately on the apex early so you can manage your speed and get your turn in right. This corner is deceptively dangerous though. I've seen many cars spin it into the left wall. It's hard to see it in car, but the track actually undulates. You can see it from this photo that there's a hump as you exit T9. Most incidents happen when a driver doesn't have smooth inputs or is offline and tries to manhandle the car to the left, or worse, both. When that happens, the car will get unsettled over the hump and into the left wall. And that's probably why there's a section of fencing there. 
If you're going to miss the apex, just let it go. Correct your line on the next lap. Where you apex turn nine will determine how well you set up for turn 10. So your focus should be wide entry into turn 10 and be fully left by then. That means your apex T9 will likely be on the later side. The curb can be used if used sparingly. You can see in this photo that the flat portion is generally not used. The curb is quite aggressive as you use more of it. So it's best left until when you're more familiar with the corner. Coming out of turn nine, the car will want to drift out a little bit, and that's okay as long as you make it back to the left side before you turn in for turn 10. Again, you don't wanna miss the turn in by trying to get the car fully left. If you miss the turn in, you're going to miss the apex. So for our final turn, turn 10, it leads onto the front straight. So you want as good as an exit as possible. And because the entry is uphill, it is very easy to understeer when you overspeed. You will need to manage your speed and turn in very well and open up the entry as much as possible. And if you can't get the car fully left by the time you turn in, then the issue is with your T9 apex, not your T10 turn in. Problems with line are usually just symptoms and the causes are generally going to be upstream. At this point, you're gonna see the Marshall station in front of you. This will be the last Marshall station before the front straight. Since you can't see the front straight, the Marshall station will warn you of any problems. The entry into T10 is about three degrees uphill, but the apex is relatively visible because it doesn't crest until you exit. It's the same steepness as turn eight, but it looks and feels a lot steeper. You're going to do a lot more turning here, so the slope affects your car a lot more. There aren't any clear references, but you can try using the signage on the pit wall to your right. And just like between turn nine and turn 10, there's a bit of crowning as you move between turn nine camber and turn 10 camber. But the track starts compressing at that time, so you don't actually feel much loss in grip. Most cars will tend to understeer as they enter the uphill section, especially if they enter too fast or too early. So try to maintain weight on the front and be patient on the pedal transition. On approach to the apex, you will begin to see the exit curb. It is very important to get your eyes on the exit early to get the right throttle timing. Make sure you get to the apex, which is near the end of the inside curbing. There is less grip as you crest, so you will need to do most of your turning before you apex. The curb can be used sparingly, much like in turn nine, but it is a much harsher curb than it is in turn nine. Once you're on the throttle and accelerating at the apex, you can start to track out towards the exit curb. You will be exiting near the middle of the curb and the curb is very flat and very usable. You should have heard the chick go over it during the lap playthrough. There is additional paving past the curb. However, after the paving, the track drops into dirt. So unless you're looking to set the ultimate time, it's best to avoid that extra pavement. After you get back onto the track from the curb, you'll be on the front straight where passing is permitted for all run groups. You'll be staying left, crossing start finish, checking for flags, and preparing to enter T1 and doing the lap all over again. And that's a lap of Mospar Grand Prix track and how it's done as exampled by the Chig. I hope this video has shown you a few things that you didn't know before. I know I don't have everything, so if you have any comments or suggestions, please share it with all of us in the comments below. Or if you wanna see more track guides like this, please let me know. I have a lot more videos on how to go fast, so please check them out. And if you want some help on breaking that plateau, or if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach me on my Discord by going to discord.lasttenth.com from your browser. In the meantime, keep sending it, and I'll see you next time.